Okay, the day has come. The most common request I'm getting asked is make a video on how to mix techno. So here we are. So firstly, right, you should know techno does not mean all house music. Techno is probably the most misunderstood of all the genres and lots of people refer to all dance music in general as techno. When really techno is its own genre with its own distinguishable sound. So techno focuses more on low bass, a heavy beat, and is considered much darker than generic house music, which basically the, the house stuff, right? All the 90s house, like it's a lot lighter in feel. You know what I mean? I guess it's more for the masses. So I'm gonna be honest with you though, I haven't got a huge background, until now that is right, with mixing techno, but I do feel once you know how to DJ, you can play anything. So for all the true techno lovers out there, I don't mean to step on anyone's toes or suggest that there's a certain way to do this, right? So please keep in mind, I am a teacher and my goal is to introduce people to techno and give them some tips on how I feel they can mix it so they too can experience this genre and basically have some fun with it. So please be kind, okay? So, um, but anyway, so what's the best way to mix techno? Short answer passionately like it really is this genre is amazing and in truth i didn't know what i was missing out on for so long like there's no turning back now modern day techno is insane the bass the subtleties at times it honestly i was playing it it reminded me of my doof days right right rocking out like under the stars with loud loud bass campfires it honestly sparked something within me right so but what i did right so i was jamming it trying to find teaching points for you and what happened was I found myself exploring the EQ so much more than I've ever done before, right? I was drawing out the transitions longer and I used the EQ, right, to emphasize certain frequencies and sounds within each song. It was honestly insane. So it was all unplanned, right? And I was completely improvising at 100%, just getting to know the songs. And I honestly think if you know how to phrase and you can keep an eye on the song's keys, like just making sure that the songs sound good together, you can make this work. It's actually really, really fun. So in this video, I'm gonna cover things to consider when mixing techno and your best chance of making your transitions sound unreal. We're also gonna cover how long you should play each song together for, like both together. And for instance, when is the right time for you to do a quick mix or a long mix? And then how you can use the EQ to emphasize certain sounds and frequencies within each song, which is heaps of fun. I do heaps on that. I'm also gonna show you how to use a bit of effects. So mainly filter and some echo, right, to highlight certain parts of each song. And even how you can use looping to give yourself more time to tease in intros, put beats under breakdowns, and basically then assuring that your new song comes in at the right time every time. It's honestly also really, really cool. So anyway, so let's do this. Now, as usual, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play through a playlist, but I'm probably gonna stop the track or even turn it down at times to explain like certain teaching points to you as I go. So that's sort of my thing, right? So it's less about me showing off and more about actually giving you tips and tools that you can use. Okay, so um, number one, okay, so by the way, um, I forgot the guy's name. Someone sent me a list with all their songs. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, it started with D, I was like, yeah, anyway, I'm so sorry, man. I've forgotten your name, but someone sent me all this stuff, like Amelia Lenz and uh, like, you know, and all these these songs, and I'll be honest, it's really, really cool songs. So, um, so I've just basically put together, and if you guys have requests too, like you want me to play certain songs and put stuff together for you, I can do it, but because it's a YouTube channel, like you'll have to hop in queue, like I've got loads of videos coming up, so I can get to it, but I do appreciate your patience. So the guy that asked for this, he's probably been waiting at least six weeks, and I, I am sorry about that, but uh, anyway, here we are. So I've got my song playing here, I just go grab a new song, and at the moment, I guess I'm kind of winging it, sort of without cues. I have got some cues on here to remind me of my teaching points, but when I was first playing it, I'm just starting from the first beat here, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at the waveform. So, say for instance here, I could come in here, right? That would be one place to come. But the thing is, sometimes, well, I might actually come in on the next phrase. So wait, okay. Okay, so I come in on a one, that's phrasing, but uh, if you don't know about that, check out my course, I'll put a link in below. So I've come in, and now, I'm... okay, and then I'm gonna prepare my EQ. Okay, now I've got that down, 
And what I'm gonna do is, I, I like that, if you saw my previous video about volume faders versus EQ, I like coming in with the EQ. So at the moment, I've got this on, this one you can hardly hear, the EQ is so low, and I can start rolling this in, okay? I can hear something there, so that's coming. Okay, now this one's gonna drop off a bit, and I might go put my new one on top. Okay. Now, I want to show you something. So this one's about to kick. Now I have to be careful now. I might pull this one back a little. Create a little bit of space for this, to, this, this one to hit. Okay, and now what I find is a lot of the time that your new song might not have a lot going on for a bit, okay? Especially if you're mixing without cues. And this, even though normally I just get this one out, but what I've found with techno is maybe I can like sort of play with the sounds. So, up until now, I've sort of done this, like my EQ curve on EQ, but if I use isolator, I can isolate certain sounds. So what I might do is, I might take out the bass completely, and I'll just show you, I'll take this out for a sec, so have a listen. That's the isolator, that, with that down. So there's just the bass, just the personality, and just the high frequencies. And I like sometimes bringing in some of the personality over this bass. So I'll show you, let's say that's going. Okay, see without it, this could be considered a little bit boring. That's okay, but I could have some of this in. Okay, now that I've explained that EQ, let me do that transition again actually, because I just wanted to break down what this did, like put it on, there's two modes for the EQ. So you have like EQ curve, this is on like club mixes. So you've got EQ and isolator. Now EQ, let's say I'm on here. If I take that out, you still hear some of everything, right? The isolator, I usually use EQ a lot of the time to be honest, but for this, where I wanna kind of take just the personality or maybe just the vocals or just something, if I put the EQ curve on isolator, I, if I have the bass fully out, I could just have the bass of this song, I have this, some, sometimes I have a bit of that in, and sometimes I can control the personality, and maybe what I wanna do is, I wanna take some of the personality from my exiting song and keep it on my new song until this one kicks in. I think that's, that's Honestly, so much fun. So uh, yeah, I'll do that again. I just want to show you. So it's done coming in. I come in on change. Okay, now I'll do it. Now that you know what I'm sort of going to do. Okay, beat match. Okay, prepare my EQ. Hey, no shall we do Okay, I'm coming in. Okay, and I'll probably just leave it about there. Just leave it slightly underneath. Okay, cool. Maybe I'll set up, I did a video on using filter and effects. So I'll show you, I might even use this to highlight the change. Okay, okay. I pull this one back on some of that base. Now there's a drop, I might emphasize that slightly. Okay, and now, I'm gonna play around with the personality of this old one. Okay, there's not a lot going on at the moment, so I'm gonna let them happen. And that's the thing I found with techno, you can really sometimes draw it out and play with the individual frequencies. Don't worry, the beats come out slightly, you just sort of do it out loud, it doesn't matter. But you see, that's that. And I can play with that sound. I could use this almost like a volume and then emphasize the changes. Beautiful. And now, I could be, say I want to turn that down. Instead of hitting that, I could be doing that here. And maybe even make it a bit thinner, the sound. And I just want to kind of like keep it going. I actually, I see it's about to kick back in here. It's risky. I might echo out a little. That's probably safe. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go to my next song. We'll do something similar to that again. So I load my song, just going from the start, match my BPMs. Okay, and I'm gonna come in. I like coming in a little bit before the breakdown. Not all the time, but I'll do it again.
nice. There's not a lot there. I've got this EQ. I'm just leaving that one. Okay. But now this has got a cool pattern. Maybe I'll just highlight the pattern. Maybe the filter adds a little bit of a cool sound to that. This one's starting to come through. I've got to be careful now. I've got to be careful. Maybe. Yes, so that one's coming now. I probably would have been better to get this out earlier, but now I'm on here, filtering it out, taking out the personality, and now I'm going to let there be space for this one because this one's doing stuff. See, if this one starts coming in with melodies and that, and this has got melodies, then you've got to be careful on personality on personality. So what I'm doing a lot is, I'm actually, when my new song is just like, there's an intro and there's not a lot going on, I'm usually taking the personality sometimes from the breakdown and just putting that on top of the beat until my new song kicks in. But once my new song kicks in and I hear that come in, I probably then should have this one out. And ideally, if you did know your songs a bit better, well, let's say I don't that well, right? But let's say I knew it was gonna kick in then, I could then, I would make sure that I probably roll it out in time, that, that would have kicked in. I could have done that better. But anyway, we get the idea. So okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, I think this will be cool. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you about looping a beat under a breakdown, okay? So let's say I wanna play this breakdown, right? So what I do is I'm gonna give myself some time to beat match. Beautiful. I set a two bar loop, I've looped it back to the first beat here. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna bring it into a place where there's not a lot of bass. So to be honest, maybe I don't really need to, like there's not a lot gonna be going on. Maybe I could leave maybe Q in, maybe a little bit down, and maybe I might filter it. I'll show you. Okay, now, so this is kind of good, because sometimes what could happen is, I've got a little bit of a beat there going. See, look, without, well there's not much there with this. I've got a little bit of a beat, and I've mentioned this in another video, but having a little bit of a beat, there's a little bit of a safety net, people have got something to kind of tap along to, instead of someone saying, instead of gurning at the lasers, you know, you're there, you're like, okay, there's something to dance to. But now, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna try and release the loop. So instead of going to the drop of my new song, I go to the drop of my new song. So instead of going to drop the old song, I'm gonna actually replace the drop, essentially. Right? Eight, two, it. It's just looking at the waveform legs. I'm going to start pulling this one back a bit. Don't want to pull it back too much because there's not a lot of bass on either side. So a lot of people go for hard swaps. I like controlling stuff. But this is going to kick. I might pull back a little. Now, I'll show, you what, I'll show you what each one's doing. See, that's my new one. But I've taken, I've taken out the bass, but I've kept that like, you know, okay? So it's just taking elements of my old song. Yeah, and there's some bit going on, this isn't doing much. I do see, I'm looking at my waveform here. This looks like something's gonna happen, so I'm gonna start rolling this one out. Maybe I can add some echo. Okay, my new song comes in. Okay, so what we did on that one, same kind of thing, 
But that last time what I was doing was I was just coming into the break and just sort of carrying that break. That time I had my beat into the breakdown and then it was just like, when do I exit my loop? So I had a beat keeping that, that beat going under the breakdown. But then all of a sudden saw my new song was going to a drop, the old song was going to a drop. And I tried to time it by thinking, hearing the phrases and also looking at the size of the waveforms as well. And uh, that's one thing I've become pretty good at actually, just being able to take educated guesses by looking. But anyway, so I've got to go to my next one. So now this one here, I'll show you. It's a bit more of an energy mix. Now, up until now, it was all about kind of like letting this one kind of go, but old one go. But now, I'm just now going to make this one kick in pretty much straight away. My new song's going to kick. So I'm coming in under. And then instead of allowing this break to go, let's just go to a new song. Cool. And then, if I wanted to, that's good enough. This dropped off. There's nothing there. I could take that out. And that's another way to transition too. I like that one. It's kind of like fast. It's like, yes. So what it means is instead of like allowing the breakdown to play and the drawing them out, sometimes you might see this about to drop off and maybe you don't want the break all the time. You want to keep the energy going. So what I did was I mixed in over the end and I timed it as well by looking at the waveforms that all of a sudden this one would drop back, it drops back for a bit and then bang, it kicks in. Now, again, there's two ways to do that. One would be to map your songs with cue points and to practice everything, okay? And if you were to do that, probably look at my How To Mix Tech House video, where I've gone and given a method of like finding where the chorus ends, putting your cue point 16 bars back, finding the part you wanna play, giving yourself 16 or 24 bars to come in, and then that's actually really cool. And I've got a video on my online course as well, my free one, linked below, where I've actually got how to set cue points and stuff for different genres of music, which is actually really cool if you want everything to line up perfectly all the time. But what I notice is by, by doing enough songs and mixing enough, that you can start to notice trends in the waveforms, then you can get to a point that you can mix without cues, which honestly, that's what I've done here, because it's a great way to kind of get to know songs, and I didn't really know the songs, and so I was just jamming without cues, and then basically finding teaching points, and just like letting the set come to life, which is a lot of fun. But um, okay, maybe I'll do one of those again, another energy mix. So let's say here, I can see I've only got 30 seconds before the bass really kicks in. Here, yeah, I see there's probably about 30 seconds to the end. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Coming on the change, that's important. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I'll be honest, right? I'm on a bit of a roll with these. Like, I, I just enjoy doing it. Someone's knocking on the door, and I'm like, it's the postman. I'm like, so anyway, if you heard all that, I apologize. It's kind of throwing me a bit better. I'll get back in. So I've got plenty of time. So let's see what this one's doing. Okay, and up until now, okay, I've been, up until now, I've kind of been mixing fairly quickly, okay? So now let's have a listen. Let's see what, let's give this song a chance. Sometimes let the song breathe. Let's hear. Okay, and I, I admit, I did play this one before and I was messing around with this player. It's like I have played it like through like early this morning. And when this bit kicked, I initially went to mix over that. And what happened was, I was like, wow, when that kicked in, I was like, that's really good, man. It's not about how fast I can mix, you know? It's about actually creating atmosphere. And I'm like, you know what? The second half of this song is way more, like it's, it's cool, man. So I just used the first half of this song to kind of like, I could have my old song playing over the beginning while nothing happens, then drop that one out, right? If the doorbell didn't go. And then anyway, but then, um, have then until this one kicks in and now this one's playing and I'm, I like it. So let it go, you know? Okay. And sometimes that's important, you know, just let the song breathe. So um, if I wanted to, let's say, let's say you want to just practice your beat matching in the time that you wait. Come in, set a loop. Two, two, three, four, bang. So I just loop the first two bars, beat match. about when I release the loop, when I think it looks like a good time. I think I'll go now. Okay. Yeah, so. cool. okay. So there's a break here, that's kind of why I came. If you see a break, I'm going to mix into the break. So I like the sound. And so the mix isn't so aggressive. I have kept elements of this in. You know, I've got the bass right out on this. I could start putting it back a bit. If I wanted to start blending out, I just sort of do it with the EQ. And I might just go. Okay, cool. And now this song comes in. Okay, um, maybe I'll do one more. But this is like, you know, pretty much how it makes it. So I'm just sort of like improvising a little bit. I'll go from the start, okay. And then when I hit play on my new song and you know, even how long I play them out for, it depends a little bit on what I'm doing. I am actually like kind of improvising a little bit. Like I just kind of like jam. You definitely got to come in on one. I could come in here, but if I was to come in there, right? Like I can hit play, but it kind of depends on how long I've got some new song kicks in. So if this is a really long song, which it is actually, maybe it's gonna take a while to kick in because if this one kicked in fairly quickly and I came in after one minute, I haven't really given this song much of a chance. You know what I mean? So, but, so let's say you, you're worried that you're coming in too early, you don't want to cut anything major in half. I guess you just wait, right? You come in later. Even that maybe would have been better, but still, by looking at the waveform here, there's a big break in the middle here, right? I'm still back a couple of minutes from it. To be honest, I might wait even, the closer I get to that, the safer it's gonna be. So what I might do is I might actually wait to the next one. See, so it's gonna dip back here on the waveform and now I've got a big one minute chunk. And quite often you might have one minute intros too. So that's actually, if I'm mixing without cues and I've got kind of like minute intros and minute choruses, like minute main bits. Like, and I can see that there's minute markers on the, on the waveform here. Just taking guesses, if I come in here, I reckon I've got a better chance of making it work. Okay, beat much. Okay, beautiful. Come in, see there's not a lot here too. I can just come in, and see how I just brought the volume in, not even on a one, it's cause this is so far down. Now I can start coming in. 
Okay, and it's doing cool stuff. I like that. Cool. Just for fun. Always keeping crazy in mind. If I was to do a high pass filter, it's always pulling back on the 823 or 7234, 8234 bang or pulling back before that one kicks in, emphasize it. Okay, I could probably let it go a bit longer. Something's happening here. And if I want to listen to this one on its own, just have that, go to Q. Yeah, this is going to come in hard. It's already coming a bit. Okay. I'm going to start building this one in. Good, I'm gonna pull this back. And see, I have options here. One, and I could have just got rid of that. That's a half fast mix. Let's pretend you didn't. See, maybe that would have been better there. I instinctively felt that. This one felt like it was coming in strong, felt like there's a lot going on, so I could have just rolled out and get that back in, right? But let's imagine, let's see what happens if I kept it in. It's that sound. It's whether you want that, that's your call. But see, there's so much improvising, whether you want it, just make space for the ones. No, oh, but there's vocals there. You got to be yeah, If you hear a vocal and it's really starting to kick in, you got to be careful letting them play together too long. There's no way. Once a vocal comes in, and you know, then I'm like, there's a lot of personality. I don't need the personality of that. So, messing around with vocals is kind of like, you know, not something you really want to do. So I've got another video, like a bit more, more commercial music, but it's kind of like about avoiding vocals on vocals. And that's something you kind of want to do. Not that they have vocals, but if it's got vocals, it's got enough personality. It's probably, I was probably right in my first intuition and that was rounded out. This one felt like it was coming in strong. If it's doing a lot, I don't need this one to emphasize that one. Anyway, so just a quick shout out to everyone that suggested I do this. Um, this is honestly the most fun I've had in a long time. So um, actually, Deepers, that was his name. So thanks, mate. You gave me a lot of song ideas. So I appreciate that. And everyone else as well. So hopefully this video is either giving you some inspiration or perhaps confirm that you're already on the right path. And if you are new to the genre, I would suggest that you start by researching and finding songs that you like. So what I'll do is I'll link in the track list below as well. So you can you know see what artists I use and maybe that be a good start then basically find a bunch of songs put it through your DJ software so the gear can read it and I'd even analyze for keys so basically if you're not sure what to play next and you don't know your material you can try mixing in something that you know is going to sound good when played together it's a great way to kind of like build your confidence quickly then basically improvise so basically improvise keep the tips in mind that I discussed in this video so that means you know you say if you're struggling just remember be respectful of the drops. So that means the drops where it kicks in kind of hard. Try and create a little bit of space for the drops so that the drops hit like even harder. And be careful of playing big bits on big bits. And if the mix is sounding messy, instead of quickly retreating with the volume fader, which can sound kind of sudden, use the EQ to kind of blend the exiting song back so it dissolves into the mix as opposed to suddenly disappearing, making your transition sound super bumpy. And if you're not sure about that, Last week I did a video on volume faders versus EQ, which I think is pretty cool, so check that out. Now again, this video does assume that you know how to DJ, and if you don't know, honestly, cut the foreplay, allow me to be your teacher. In truth, I put this playlist together in under an hour, from basically getting the tracks to jamming it to finding teaching points for you. So imagine what I can do for you. Anyway, decide for yourself, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'll link in some free content, content below to help you get started. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. I hope it was worth the wait too for the people waiting for it. And um, maybe I'll do some more on techno in the future. There's, I noticed there's different types of it. And um, from this, I guess I really hope a new breed of DJs come from this. This is scenes needs more of that. So, you know, now once this whole, because this is virus thing going around it all over. So I guess once that all passes, maybe there's, there's a bigger reason for people to kind of come out and celebrate, like celebrate humanity, you know? We come out and once it's all passed, we're still alive, you know? For the promoters out there, maybe you could run a we're still alive party. So now, if you don't know how to DJ, now's probably the time to learn. Everyone's kind of like, you know, hibernated. So take, do something in that time and then emerge as one of the best DJs. So anyway, um, 
Thanks again for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next video. I love doing this stuff. Hopefully I've got some really, like I've got some really cool stuff coming up. So subscribe now so we can keep the momentum rolling. And again, if you do want some structure and you're like basically like an online course, for instance, my lessons do follow a really cool sequence that starts at the beginning and ends with you playing in clubs. They've even given you club strategies on how to get in as well. So that's sort of my background. But um, anyway, check out my online course. I'll link it in below. Anyway, thanks again. Keep well. See you in the next video.